For below £100, there aren't many Swiss watch brands to choose from. If you're lucky, you might be able to grab a cheap Tissot, or alternatively, a plastic Swatch. However, for something a bit more substantial, it might be worth looking at a different brand. Founded in 1893, Swiss Army knife manufacturer Wenger are highly regarded for their multifunctional tools. It was only natural that in the 1980s they ventured into wristwatch production, with watches being a trusty companion to military personnel. Chances are you're more familiar with the much larger Victorinox brand, who acquired Wenger in 2005. Victorinox sells some highly popular military dive watches under their own name, but they're typically more expensive. For this channel, the lower cost Wenger brand fits the bill. Online, the specifications looked awesome for the price, and very few people on the internet have got any sort of decent reviews about this brand. So, I thought I'd make one worth watching. At the time of purchase, this watch was retailing for around £80 on Amazon, who kindly covered the cost of this watch. Therefore, I'll link this watch on Amazon in the description in return. Some of these Wenger models are available on Prime, however, it appears many options are only shippable from Switzerland, meaning delivery is likely going to take a bit longer. So, what do you get for your £80? Well, the watch arrived inside some really impressive packaging, actually, with a white box featuring the Wenger logo and a red Swiss tab. The plush leather pillow inside is probably the best I've come across for a watch in this price range. And while the packaging is lovely, it doesn't necessarily indicate a quality watch. So how good is the product inside? Well, this watch doesn't appear to have a clear name as such. I know it's part of the Urban Metropolitan series. I'll leave the code on screen. I opted for this black variant with a NATO strap, though there appears to be a couple of colorways, along with several similarly designed pieces. There's a particular one that I really like, which I'll also link in the video description, at the time that one wasn't available. It's not quite as big as the chunky styling suggests, coming in with a 41mm diameter, 10mm depth, and 48.2mm look to look. Small wrists are going to have to look elsewhere, but for average wrists, this is really wearable especially given the sub 50mm lug to lug size. Probably the most impressive part of this watch is the case. It's fully constructed of 360nl steel and features a gorgeous glossy curved bezel which sits atop a brushed matte case. It's admittedly very simple but it just works and it fits the utilitarian look of this watch. The metal itself feels very weighty and durable. I imagine this would hold up quite well against bumps and scratches. As you may have noticed, a key aesthetic feature of this watch is the thick lugs. These sit strikingly alongside the strap and almost look like they bend outwards despite them being straight. While far from my usual taste, I like them and I think they give some added bulk and weight that make the watch feel even more durable. I've got no real complaints about the glossy crown either, which is well sized and has sufficient grip for easy adjustments, though perhaps a branded signature would have been a nice touch to make it look less plain. Aquatic performance is also solid, with the notched case back contributing to 100 meters of water resistance. As such, you should have no problems when it comes to swimming, showering, washing the dishes, anything that normal life might entail. This is just a great peace of mind feature that's well appreciated. 10 bar is a specification I look for for just that reason. Another engraving on the case rear indicates that the watch utilizes a sapphire coated mineral crystal. This is a lesser known type of mineral crystal, which essentially features a thin layer of sapphire across the surface, with the intention being to get a bit more added scratch resistance. I've reviewed one or two watches featuring this material before, and it falls somewhere between standard mineral glass and sapphire. In fact, Victorinox claim this material is around twice as hard as the standard mineral glass found in most watches around this price point. The crystal here is flat and does protrude a fraction from the main case, though not enough to be a problem, I don't think. As with many Venga watches, this one comes kitted with a pretty simple dial. This features the typical bold numbers around the perimeter, with those at 3, 6, 9 and 12 all enlarged. Admittedly, the dial is flatter than I'd like, and I think a small amount of added texture somewhere would spice it up a bit. Additionally, the black hands kind of blend into the dial, which doesn't help visibility. I think some of the other Wenger models that weren't available at the time of checkout, including that one I mentioned earlier, they avoid both of these issues. However, there are areas of this model I do like, such as the black date window, which is integrated particularly well, and the red arrow hand, which is slim and bright. While not the most attractive watch in the world, I think it looks pretty good for an everyday watch. My fiance said it kinda looks like a premium Timex, and I'm inclined to agree. 
This watch is powered by Swiss Ronda 515 quartz movement, which delivers an accuracy of minus 10 to plus 20 seconds a month. It comes with a good reputation for reliability, though this unit seems to be slightly misaligned, usually hitting a fraction to the left of each marker, whilst sometimes hitting bang on. This Urban Metropolitan also came fitted by default on this leather NATO strap. Size-wise, this is 22mm, though there was something that took my eye straight away. When examining it, I noticed that one of the spring bars had a dent in. I then whipped off the strap and noticed the other was exactly the same with a kink at the exact same spot. Excluding the possibility that these two are somehow identically damaged, I think that these are some sort of variant on the curved spring bars seen in other watches. Potentially this is there to accommodate the thickness of the included strap, though I'm sure a straight spring bar would fit in with no issues. I'd love to know if you've got a Venga similar to this, uh, does yours have those sort of bent spring bars? Outside of that, I think the strap is of above average quality. The leather feels supple and comfortable, and the keepers and buckle look really good considering it's such a budget watch. I think for most people this will be absolutely wearable, though be aware that this boosts the overall depth to about 13mm with the two layers being under the case, resulting in the watch being more on the deep side in practicality. While I don't love this watch, overall I think it's very solid, it feels well made and it's well priced. It's up to you how much the significance of that Swiss made badge holds. Personally, it doesn't make a great deal of difference to me. I think this is a reliable, hardy watch regardless of where it's made. For a watch with chunky styling that isn't enormous, I think this and some of the other Wenger watches are certainly worth considering. I'll link them in the video description if you're interested. In my last review, I covered the uh, pretty awful fossil Coachman chronograph, which I honestly thought was a piece of junk for the money. Here's where you guys placed it on our cool wall. Where do you reckon this budget Swiss piece goes? Is this watch? It's... It's, 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 it's what they call a wen, a wenger. Uncool, cool, or ice cold? Give me your votes in the comments section. Subscribe for more watch videos. I'll see you in the next one.